I'm Commander Sinclair. Welcome to Babylon 5. If someone doesn't begin making sense here, I'm going to become most annoyed. Why do you ask me questions when you already know the answers? And after a while, you know, that really starts to annoy me. This is definitely the place for one hell of a party. Gold Channel opened. Greetings and welcome to your last Best Hope for Conversation, a B5 podcast. I am Jesse Jackson. I'm directing traffic in the CNC. <laughs> Joining me today is my longtime podcast brother, Lou. Lou, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's great to be back with the, the gang. Yeah. My new friend, Jason, a.k.a. the Big Geek. Jason, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks a lot for inviting me on the show. Yeah, we we're excited to have you. And of course, the podcast mom, Karen. Hello, everybody. Oh, yeah. So uh, we um, I, I've talked about a little bit of this in our intro, but um Karen, Lou, and I have been looking for an excuse to get together and podcast. (laughs) And gosh, a couple of years ago, Lou mentioned, you know, I got the Babylon 5, uh, you know, series set uh, Mm. as a gift, and I haven't broke it out yet. You know, and since I've never seen it, would we want a podcast? And we all said, yeah, that'd be a good idea. And just other things kind of work through. Uh, So this seemed like uh, 2022 um uh, the last best hope for maybe some sanity with everything going on uh so we decided to do a uh babylon 5 podcast uh we'll set up the rules very quickly uh jason has seen the show um in its entirety so have i uh karen and lou have maybe seen episodes here and there but they have nope. no true context of the show so this will be a spoiler free discussion uh if you have never watched babylon 5 you can watch that listen to this podcast and we will only be discussing things up into the current episode we're discussing uh we will uh we certainly are going to have our rookies forecast and give thoughts and uh Jason and I will try to bite our tongue if they are <laughs> way off or way uh, correct, but it should be a lot of fun. So I'm going to start with you, Lou. Uh, tell mm. us a little about yourself. Okay. Well, uh, if by any chance uh, you've heard our previous podcast, we did a Fringe and Farscape and way back when we did a Chuck podcast as well. So we're going way back. Um I also do a regular Stephen King podcast, uh, and that's currently in the process of transitioning from uh, um, an audio um, site to, uh, I'm going to migrate over to YouTube, but that means I have to trans- transition all my old shows over to that format, so that's going to be fun. Um, and in terms of uh, Farscape, uh, or sorry, I'm going to be making that mistake quite a few <laughs> yes, times, old habits yes. die hard, uh, Babylon 5, um, I... I caught an episode here and there, but I don't know. I just wasn't in the mood at the time. I get I and I have to admit I have a um, a thing against space station based science fiction shows because for me, obviously the original Star Trek, you know, the spaceship traveling around that that was my that was my bread and butter type of science fiction show. I was not much for space stations. Were like those were the people who go that aren't qualified to do starship travel. So that's kind of <laughs> kind of my mindset of that. But um, so I, I tried to get into the show, uh, and there was one character, um, I think a centurion, and they have like a Three Stooges haircut, and that just really, yes, <laughs> that really, really threw me for a loop. And uh, so I, I just never really, uh, it, I just fell out of it. And then you know, as uh, things pile up, um, it, it was you know three or four seasons in, and I thought I was hearing good things, but I thought oh, I, I don't really feel like sitting down and catching up. But uh, fortunately, with the internet and all this podcasting and everything, it makes doing this kind of exercise a lot fun when it's a communal exercise. So hopefully, not just between us, uh, but uh, our listeners will also enjoy the journey as well. Uh, you know, rookies and veterans alike. I mean, we had a blast doing Farscape and Fringe. Um, and uh, it's most fortuitous because I just finished watching The Expanse, which is probably, you know, like this series is probably like the grandfather, um, along with um, Deep Space Nine. And um, so, you know, you can see the progression uh, of the quality of science fiction shows. 
And what really kind of sparked us off too was the announcement that uh, I believe the CW is going to do a reboot of Babylon 5 as well, um, which is kind of up in the air. I, I understand there's, I think the pilot still has to be uh, approved <laughs> and before filming starts. So JMS you know. just recently tweeted that he got the green light, that they're, the CW execs are excited about what he's done. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. And all I'm going to say is about, um, uh, you know, your um, Three Stooges <laughs> haircut is um, is Rigel. Just just throw Rigel yeah. in the back right. of here, you know, and then you go, oh, OK. Uh, well, Lou, it is great to have you here. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, well, my name's Jason. And uh, since this is an audio podcast, uh, Nobody can see my centauri do, but I do have one. Yeah. It looks it looks really nice. Uh, but um, I, I'm a I'm a lover of podcasts. I've been podcasting with two of my really good friends for eh, about five years now. We did four years of Digital Soup. Uh, we're currently doing uh, the Listwise podcast, where you know we just pick a topic and it's it's all about uh, you know like say like the top five musical frontmen, whatever. We come with uh, five choices each. And then we we hash it out, we debate, we battle it down to a show's five. And it's it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of great fun, a lot of great interaction. Um, but uh, Babylon 5, I mean, I love this show. And it, I actually didn't see the first run. I saw it in reruns on TNT, and I was mad that I didn't see it when it first uh, aired. But I love this show. I mean, uh, like Lou said, my favorite space stuff is the adventure stuff. Like, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I've never watched Deep Space Nine just because it's stationary. I think I, I did hear mm -hmm. that they do venture out, you know, in, in different things, especially in later seasons. But I just it didn't interest me. So I never watched it. But yeah, uh, pure space adventure. I love it. Um, so that's that's my uh, forte there. And uh, I have like I like I told you guys pre-show that um, I've seen this series through twice. Uh, but the last time was about a decade ago. So a lot of this is from memory, but I did recently watch The Gathering again just to refresh myself uh, prior to this. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this because, well, I like to talk. <laughs> well, Jason, that is always a good thing. Um, and Karen, it is so good to see you, my friend. Um, this is hey. new for us, you know, because a lot of times we did Skype where we just heard voices. We didn't get to see each other's face. Uh, so, Karen, for those of you who may not know um, your legendary status oh, as the podcast mom. That's silly. That's just silly. Um, but true. Yeah, I, I've done like 100 podcasts. I mean, I honestly don't know how many I've done. If I'm not going to list them down, but if you want to see <laughs> and, and hear any of them, you can go to alleystuff.com, which is my blog. Um, and there's a lot of links on there. And okay, I review romance novels. So that's all the other stuff. But there is a page that's called where you can find me. And it has all my links and everything. Um, I just recently did a Next podcast last year on the show Next. Um, but Besides that, I haven't podcasted in a couple of years. As you can probably tell, I don't have a mic. Um, like I took all that stuff down. Um, so I apologize. I'll try and get that set back up. But no, you sound um, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So I haven't done anything for a couple of years. Like I said, the last thing I did was a Doctor Who podcast and the Fandom Zone, which were oh, just amazing. I mean, you guys are amazing um lou actually got me into podcasting <laughs> he is the first person that asked me to do anything the chuck podcast so uh he's to blame for me and then <laughs> we're to blame for jesse yes um, uh, so karen and i after we were doing the forecast farscape podcast she said hey i'm thinking about doing a castle podcast would you want to join me and i went yeah you know me i love nathan fillion oh, i forgot about that yeah. and yeah, what yeah. was yeah we uh storm in the castle and what what and reason why that's important is every other time i'd been kind of the the audience member you know the, newbie, the kind of yeah. contributor and all of a sudden as we started doing this more and more um Karen was doing all the editing, all the posting, doing everything. So I started, well, like, 
do you want me to kind of host? Oh, that'd be great. And I said, yes, please. Yeah. yeah. And so I ended up, you know, learning those skills of doing it. And it was interesting. I thought of you, Karen, because uh, just a few weeks ago, I had ended up having like six people on my Springsteen podcast doing a oh year review, you know, and I was doing, uh, I was, I was doing, I was Susan in CNC, you know, controlling everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, Babylon 5 has a special place in my heart. Uh, in the middle, we were in the, in, when it came on TNT, my company I was working with at the time was in the middle of transitioning from legacy systems to a SAP system and nothing was going right. Nothing Mm -hmm. was going right. And, you know, we went from having, I worked in the customer service center. We had a, you know, a four or five minute average handle time and we had went up to 15 or 20 minutes because Mm -hmm. the system was so clunky and just the whole life was going to shit. And, um, and so I would go home and pull up on my VCR, you know, the latest TNT, you know, and, and would just lose myself for that hour in that world. And uh, so it just, and then when I ended up watching season five, you know, in real time as TNT put this mm-hmm. out. So, and then I've gone back multiple times ever since then, huge JMS fan. Um, he, he has a new novel that came out last year, um, uh, together we will go, I think is the name of it. I'll have to look that up, but it's, it's a, it's a great novel that the main theme is a group of people all going to commit suicide together. And you go, God, that sounds so depressing, but it wasn't, it was actually a very great book. And he, I just finished reading his writing book and I am not a writer, but him breaking down how to do writing and everything is great. And, I've loved everything he did, uh, you know, from Jericho to all the Marvel movies he wrote, uh, Mm -hmm. his comics. Uh, So I'm excited. Um, Sense8? Yeah, Sense8 on Netflix was just amazing. So uh, here we go. Uh, We're going to start. So now that we've got our setting, um, we're going to start with the very beginning. Uh, There was, this was The Gathering was a the Babylon 5 pilot, they had filmed that uh, and then kind of took it around and got a thought. So um, I'm going to start with you, Lou. Uh, you know, tell us what your thoughts were. And this is, this is long. I had forgotten how this was not an hour plot. This was a made for TV movie pilot that could have, if it hadn't gone, it could have stand alone. Yeah. Yeah, this is a kind of a relic from the olden days of TV when um, a lot of series would start with a 90 minute pilot. So yeah. it was uh, interesting to go back to it. Um, as with most pilots, uh, it's it's it has um, clunky parts and parts that work well. Um, and, you know, it just reminds me like I'm uh, just started watching Yellowstone and uh that that original movie pilot was like yeah we watched it because we'd heard so much about the series I thought, yeah this is okay and then we get yeah. into the first episode and okay okay now we see what the show is about so yeah i'm expecting that to happen with this series as well um but it, it's interesting uh because you know the uh, star trek fans always have this issue like with them um, if you're as old as i am if you grew up with the original series and then you come along and then people that grew up with the next generation and that and they say, oh, I can't watch that original series. It looks so fake and blah, blah, <laughs> yeah. blah. And, you know, but because it was part of my childhood, I just can't see that. If, um, like I see it, but it doesn't bother me because I, I'm so used to it. But so you come into this show and man, does it ever feel 80s? Uh, I mean, uh, oh. from production values, uh, yeah. especially the civilian clothes and their hair, their the blow dry hair stuff. I mean, I'm almost expecting like a, an aha video, like take on me to start playing somewhere, you know, like it's just, uh, that's a little bit jarring, but you, you kind of get used to it. Um, I, I, the CGI and the spaceships was a mixed bag for me, but I didn't mind it generally because I just like the designs of the ships overall. Um, they're all, they're all different looking. Um, and the, you know, it's an interesting concept. There's a lot of breadcrumbs i think in this episode i might be wrong but especially like you know they said well babylon five uh, well first name babylon which you know it's, it's um always makes me think of the tower of ba- babel but that's it's not quite what this is about i think but the, you know the name is the gate of the gods is what the city uh translates from the greek 
Um, well, you just, know, Leo, I'm going to step in for a bit. I think that's actually because the Tower of Babel, right, was um, the myth or the Bible talks about that because mm-hmm. they were trying to build this, that's when God gave everyone different languages so they could right. talk. So I think yeah. that a meeting point, I think that definitely could be where they were going through with the name of it. Right. So in a show like this, because it's stationary, like Deep Space Nine had this issue, and I think expands to a lesser degree because they jumped around locations, but certain yeah. locations became very familiar, like the Ceres Station or Medina Station. Here you've got Babylon 5, which interestingly is the fifth iteration of the space station. Um, the first three were destroyed. The fourth has gone missing, which um, to me is a, a big uh, breadcrumb uh, something like a how mystery. can a space station how yeah. can a spaceship go space station go missing and nobody knows what happened like weren't there not like in this episode there's ships all over the place flying around and whatnot so nobody saw what happened um, or maybe that'll be explained better um some of the the characters uh, i think my favorite right now is Garibaldi because he seems the most grounded and human um the commanders, yeah, and that's the problem with the hero characters. They're always a little dry. Um, his memory gap thing, another bed crumb, I'm sure, is very interesting. Uh, some of the alien races. I mentioned the uh, Centurion Three Stooges haircut. Still doesn't really fly with me, but uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I'll just learn to, to uh, block it out after time. Um, so, you know, there's there's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting premise for sure. Like, so all these races seem to have been at war with one another at one time or another. Um, and what, uh, what exactly the purpose of this is to the space station is to do beyond, I guess, sort of maybe keep the peace is um, still unclear to me. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's, there's enough here, uh, you know, trying to get over the datedness of certain things. is always going to be an issue. I generally, uh, some of the space station sets are pretty cool, like the central corridor where the, the gardens and that stuff looks really neat. Um, their command center is terrible. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if it gets upgraded in the series. I hope it does because it's, it's pretty cheap looking. I mean, it's funny because, you know, like I look at the original Star Trek sets and uh, because everybody was in uniform in that, you, you kind of go along with it. But the sets to me, because I grew up with it, I still you know, they still work for me, even though, you know, they're obviously very primitive, but these sets are seem even more primitive than the original Enterprise set. So it's, it's an, it's an interesting mix. And I'm intrigued and um, curious to see where it goes uh, into the first episode. Good. Karen? Yeah, I, I echo a lot of Lou's things. Um, like I, like he said, uh, with genre shows, I am so used to like the first episode or season or whatever you have to forgive a lot because a lot of it is set up and a lot of it is kind of you know getting into a groove and sometimes they don't have the money that they have later on so you're going to get some cheapness um so you know i tend to forgive a lot of that um and i have to say it gave me horrible flashbacks to high school because (laughs) I graduated high school in the 80s and um and I know this show is in the 90s which really I mean I was shocked that like uh, okay so the empath comes on board and she's got like an 80s overcoat with the big the shoulder pads and the, <laughs> and the hair I mean the hair was triggering for me um <laughs> cuz I don't know if you guys know um you guys out there I have super curly hair so I could never do any of the like the trendy hairstyles or anything. So the all the girls with the big hairstyles and stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, that was a little jarring for me. Um, but I did think the special effects were pretty good for the 90s. Uh, you know, you have to kind of put yourself in that mindset of, yeah, this was out in the 90s. Yeah. And- it- to interrupt Karen right oh, the same issue like when you're watching and I know Lou is not a fan of Doctor Who but when you're watching classic Who you have to get past like the cheesy special effects and oh, the, yeah. the super sets you have to yeah, go but like, that's okay, even that, now yeah yeah that's <laughs> I mean, true it could be yes yeah um, um and and you have to remember also that this was a TNT show 
it was not a major network like Star Trek was on CBS and The Next Generation was made by Paramount. Yeah. So they had money, they had resources. And, this, and, and to correct, this was not even a TNT show. The first three or four seasons were all just a independent only. They right. had no network at all. And then TNT picked up for the fifth season. And so, yeah, very, very limited budget. Right. And, and so I, you know, in doing my research, and I did know a bit about the series, even though I hadn't seen a yeah. single episode. Um, I mean, if you're into genre shows, you know stuff about exactly. every show, whether you've seen it or not. Yeah. Um, so I, I knew that that I was going to that was the bag I was going to get with this. It was going to yeah. be mixed for sure. Um, and also, like Lou said, there are, you know, intriguing plot points. Yes. Um, and I can see where it's setting up for some mm-hmm. storylines. Um, I thought as well as being like a peacekeeping place there was a lot of business references yes um they tend to do business there so maybe also a trade port of some sort i mean i'm assuming that's kind of i mean the empath is there only for business yes so you know that it's not like lieutenant troy who is there for the for you know alien races and the crew and all that um, she is literally there to facilitate trade. Um, and I, I have to ask, why would anybody agree to that kind of a meeting? Why? <laughs> it's such a disadvantage. That doesn't make well, any sense. But. I had the same note. Why would you not, like, you would have your own, you know, yeah. uh, you know, psychic. Right. Like, why? It, it would be like, okay, I'm going to, I have a computer and you have a abacus <laughs> You know, right. uh, why, why would you not, you know, uh, I mean, it makes for a good point and for a plot point. In the show, but, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, in real life, you would go, no, both both businessmen would have their own, the same way you might have your own, you know, uh, you know, note taker or something. So, yeah, right. that's, that's interesting, Karen. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I just, I thought it was, there was some weirdness. There yeah. was some really good stuff, which. Yeah. I, w- I was happy about to see that, you know, I'm not wasting my time <laughs> with it. Um, I assumed I wasn't because of how you talked about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I- I'm not going to get into detail because I'm sure we're going to do that okay. in a few minutes. But... Yeah. Uh, Jason, how about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I-, I-, I love the series. And of course, when you go back to something that you watched a long time ago, um, Like there's some shows like, oh, I love the greatest American hero back when I was a kid. (laughs) One of the greatest shows ever picked up the DVD set really cheap. Um, I couldn't get through a couple of episodes. It did Mm -hmm. not hold up. Uh, Yeah, Um, I don't think this is bad. But yeah, you do start picking out a lot of different things. Um, One of the big things is I know the the person that did the music for this episode is not the one that did it for the series. But, oh, my gosh, this is horrible music. When I am listening to this with the guitars and the drums, I'm thinking Miami Vice. And I don't want Mm -hmm. Miami Vice in space. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just I really dislike that. And I don't know how in depth we're going to go in the show. I have a lot of points I want to talk about. But can I just throw something here at Karen real fast about a comment you just made um, about the uh, the interpreter, the uh, the empath. uh, empath Mm -hmm. now i believe that is a station empath it's not specifically for that businessman i think the staging at the table was incorrect because she uh they had her sitting right next to the one uh you know businessman and the other businessman was like across the table which would lead you to think that's his businessman but i think she's supposed to be impartial to both parties i'm Uh, I'm not i'm not sure on that either that's a great point because i got the feeling that she was she was there to be hired the same way that right. you would a um um what do you see on my oldness where a uh, notary a notary notary yeah, right. you know that right, right. so i'm not sure yeah I, i'm assuming that the the guy uh that she was sitting next to is the one that paid for her service so she was working as his advocate but i also do think she's supposed to be impartial yeah. So it was kind be. of a. But it yeah. didn't come across like that. No, <laughs> it didn't. Uh, yeah. and, and, and see, it wouldn't work though, because if uh, she could just be hired by anyone, any of the businessmen, I mean, if they have both of their own impasse, 
the, the impasse could be lying. They could be just right. working for that person. So there is no truth. Yeah. But if they are a 100 percent impartial station owned, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just to be there to make sure that everything's on the up and up, that would make more sense to me. Yeah. Uh, I guess. But, I, that's a but good you research that, point. I'm going to I'm going to try to look that up. Yeah. You notice that she didn't do any help for the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so she's not that impartial. <laughs> she, you know, she's like, he's telling the truth, you know, yeah. to the one guy, but she never gave any of that back yeah. to the guy on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. So uh, like I was saying, I, I, and you were saying impartial, yes, because she's owned by the station or, you know, works for the station, but, you know, she knows where her bread is buttered. She's getting paid by the one guy. So she got to talk to that guy. I did find it interesting and you had to forgive but the very clunky dialogue of well you of course have to follow the rules that are and you know uh sinclair lays them out you know uh no versus, gambling yeah yeah and, and like <laughs> everyone would be like yes we we know these you know because uh <laughs> you know the psychorps uh has these rules about them uh very cool what any, any other thoughts jason and we'll just uh, kind of yeah, just uh, real fast, because you mentioned that uh, uh, interaction between uh, her and Sinclair. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious, and I completely forgot about this in my first viewings. But where the uh, right after they talk about the uh, you can't go into the casino, you know, of course. Yeah. Um, and he uh, he's going to take her then through the what a lot of people call the alien zoo, which that's something else we got to talk about. Yeah. Yes. But the way he pulled her up the ramp by grabbing her arm mm -hmm. right here. Did you notice that yeah. and pulled her up like, come on, lady, you come with me. It's it's uh, I just thought that was hilarious, especially yeah. like this is supposed to be in the future. This is there's supposed to be a lot of democracy on this place. And he's treating a woman like you'd see um, Ron Burgundy treat a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I noticed there was a hint of misogyny. Yeah. Yes. Most Just a definitely. hint. Now, yeah. mind you, not on the bridge because you know that was pretty all over the place with yeah. women and men and all. But man, there was a lot of a lot of stuff I had to forgive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and it it was kind of it did feel clunky. Um, well, we're going to go through the alien quarters. Um, yeah. Just you know, instead of. I guess it's the same thing like every once in a while I'll go through where I live to go to Arlington I'll go through the DFW airport because it's a shorter trip and I just pay <laughs> the the two dollar parking fee you know that you go in and go out but it did seem just a little weird you would go through that um so yeah I had I rewatched this recently uh was struck by um there it's not spoilers that you know there's certainly things recast once it goes to series uh i won't talk specifically who but it was kind of neat to see these characters um i had forgotten how much of this was and i want to get y'all's thoughts on it it was a mystery story you know mm -hmm. who who hurt kosh you know what mm -hmm. was this going on and everything about it um all the intrigue you know there there was a lot of heavy lifting like who are mm -hmm. all the characters who are all mm -hmm. the different uh races what is the dynamic between the races you know between you know this the mysterious of the vorlons you know the uh, centauri you know uh all the other like jakar and his race and, and this all back and forth and the humans trying to do there um i was impressed by in and you guys know how much I love Star Trek, right? But the whole, they actually look like aliens. They just don't have weird noses, per se, right? right? Um, the spaceships did look different because it was, uh, you know, animated. One of the things that uh, JMS, uh, J. Michael Stravinsky, talked about that he believed after, because he has written for a lot of TV shows before this, that he felt there was a lot of waste that mm -hmm. because people were waiting for the script to finish that you would end up paying the crew over time to build sets and to do costuming and he believed that if you could have scripts done in advance 
that you could have a crew not have to do a lot of overtime. And so one of the things we will talk about is he ended up writing, you know, I don't know the percentage, but 90% of the scripts were written by him through the five years. And he made a point of it, it was in plenty of time so that the cast and crew very seldom had to go into overtime um, because that way they could stay on budget, uh, which um, because of them not being on a major network, it was very important to them. Um, so let's start to, and you know, uh, Karen, I'll start with you. Um, the mystery, did you, did you think it was a good way to do the story to kind of set the world of having a who poisoned, you know, Kosh? Yeah, I think it's very efficient to do things that way because you do get a bunch of background on all the characters that way. Um, and you also get that kind of tension issue, which is always good for a story. Um, and you get to see, you know, he was in the war with these people. There was a war with these people. Um, and so there might be some issues there. Oh, you know, they don't like those people. So it could have been that, you know, so there's a lot of good setup that you can do with a, a quote unquote murder mystery or as this was a poisoning mystery. Um, and you also got some setup with um, like how things are run there. Um, you know, who the major players were on the ship, um, like when they did that vote right uh, near the end of the episode or I guess the middle. Um, and there were a few things that I had nits with with that, but it was mostly pretty decent character setup, I thought. Um, I really did get a good handle on, um, and I might not know all the ins and outs of what races go with who and all that stuff, but I did get a good feel for the main characters and also um, whatever the tensions are between the characters. And, and the relationships between them. So I thought it was really an efficient way to do things. Okay, Lou? Yeah, I agree. I think Karen made a lot of good points there. It's, uh, I think the best moment was the inquiry. Uh, and we got to see on the vote, the sort of like a litmus test for each of the characters. Um, Jakar, I believe is the, um, Darn. He, kind of, he reminds me of a Ferengi at this, mm -hmm. at this time. Uh, he's very, you know, wheeling and dealing kind of guy. He's got mo mo motives. Um, uh, the Centurion, I don't remember his yeah. name. Uh, uh, he, Londo. Londo. He seems very cowed. I, like, I don't know. I, I, I guess they lost the war or something like that. So his, his whole race seems very, um, depressed. Um, mm -hmm. and then you have the, um, Minari, Mimbari, yes, Mimbari, uh, and that's um, that's Mura Falane, right? That's yes, Deline? yeah, and she's yeah. kind of like a Vulcan right now, coming off as a bit of a yeah. Vulcan to me. She's always doing this weird that. thing with her eyes, like she's yeah. analyzing, processing stuff all the time. Um, and she has this strange relationship with the uh, with the captain. Um, and, and she's observing him, but at yeah. the same time, they have a friendship, which I, that hasn't, I don't think it's been explained properly yet, uh, or I, I missed it, um, but they have some sort of background that I'm not fully aware of. So I, I thought the uh, overall, yes, I thought the murder mystery was a good way to do it because it showed uh, the functions of the crew as well, the Garibaldi of security, um, got into the captain's background, and yeah. um the only thing I would say is it kind of reminded me of the original Star Trek episode, Is There in Truth No Beauty, with the uh, Medusan ambassador and then the Vulcan mind meld stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's that stuff was kind of the same. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, it, it was a pretty effective uh, way of um, laying out a lot of the relationships and dynamics of the of the space station. Good. Oh, good. Jason? Uh, yeah, just uh, exactly what Lou said there is uh, this wasn't an original idea. It's just... Yeah. Um, it's stuff that we've seen before. I, I like the way they presented it. And um, like Karen said, it is a great way to get some background story because then you're investigating something. Uh, so you do look into the background of some of the characters, which makes a lot of sense because you don't want to be so ham fisted and just, you know, be punching people with all these details. But if you're finding these details out as you're going about, uh, you know, inquiry, uh, it works out nice. 
Now, um, I had to laugh uh, or actually smile a little bit when Lou is kind of like thinking about some different things. And I'm thinking, hey, just wait until you see what happens in the series as you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, in uh, fact, um, yeah, good. this is fun for me because um, <laughs> I, I'm on the other side of the aisle. And so, by the way, I'm making notes and I'm going to summarize our breadcrumbs before we go <laughs> so that we can track good, good. them. Uh, yeah. Um, so what did you... Any thoughts, uh, by the way, I thought it was a good, I I had remembered vaguely that it was a mystery. And so um, it, it doesn't work as a mystery for me now because I remember, and there's a lot of things going on. I see Jason nodding his head, but yeah, as a way to set up, I thought it was a really good, um, and there there is I, I really like how they're laying the groundwork for the different races and the idea um one of the things that struck me is that um humans were not the dominant necessarily race they in babylon 5 was under you know the earth government but there was it's almost like a mini united nations you know with the council and, and i really like that um lou you liked uh you mentioned how much you love garibaldi there is a story that is not spoiler at all that jms said that when they when the guy who came in to you know uh in, you know to test for jerry dole came in um he was incredibly short and like yeah let's do this and, and they just went away and like okay that's he's garibaldi <laughs> let's just let's just mm. cast him uh so uh, yeah he is a i think a wonderful character mm. i really enjoy from the beginning um yeah any thoughts on the psy corps uh you know the you get the uh the premise and this is later give it out more details but i don't think this is spoiling there this is a whole there is a rules around them the psycorp is a organization that organizes telepaths and they are mm -hmm. telepaths not empaths um we tend to think that they truly are telepaths um and that's what so, i thought yeah yeah so okay. any thoughts on that and jason you know from a non-spoilery you know what 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 was your initial, if you can go back that long, what was your initial thoughts on that? Uh, well, it's it's very interesting. I'm trying to remember it. It's been, you know, for a while here. Yeah. But I I believe that um, what they do is if anybody shows any anybody from any race shows any type of telepathic uh, prowess, they come for them. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, so much sci-fi goes into my yes, head. Sometimes I don't know <laughs> wh what's what. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, and we've seen this before in some different things. You know, where uh, people show you know extraordinary powers and stuff. Then uh, there's yeah. always groups that want to try to harness that in. They don't want them to be out there freelancing and doing all this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy it a lot. Um, I do have to say, I wanted to say this. Uh, okay, so Garibaldi through this whole series. Uh, it always the way he presents himself, the way he acts. I always felt that JMS was looking to bring Bruce Willis in oh, and God. they couldn't get him. <laughs> so they're like, let's find somebody else that resembles him and acts like him because, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking one day he was just going to let out the yippee ki -yay line. Yes, exactly. Which would have well, been hilarious. You know, he played a, a David Addison wannabe on Moonlighting. Oh, I loved so, Moonlighting. Oh, yeah. oh, did he? Yeah. Did he? Oh, yes, no. he did. <laughs> oh, I would think oh, wow. there was a there was an episode where they had like fan boys and stuff. Oh, and yeah. he was like, I want to be David Adams. He looks oh. so much like him in that wow. show, at least. And and he definitely yeah. has some Bruce Willis vibes. I guess I never so. went very deep on uh, Jerry Doyle. I didn't know what else he was in. Yeah. Um, any Lou, Karen, either one of you thoughts on the psychorps and the telepaths? You know, because I know my worry was, hey, is this going to be the easy answer? Like, oh, the telecast, yeah, yeah. you know, read the mind, you know. Um, so any thoughts? Well, I think that the, the fact that they set up that there were very strict rules for them mm -hmm. um, eased my mind a little bit, you know, that she's not going to be that kind of, uh, what is it, do ex machina yeah. type of thing where it just ends because she figures everything out. And in this episode, that's actually subverted. 
because she gets that vibe and it's just completely wrong because of the technology that yeah. the poisoner used so which doesn't uh, make sense but yeah i know but but still i i think that's good because they're making her not like the fall guy for all the Mm -hmm. for all the stuff um and and from what i know of stuff that i've heard about the show there's going to be some famous people playing Mm -hmm. psychor employees (laughs) yes um so i'm looking forward to that very much and i have to say one of the scenes I found most humorous was when uh, Jakar propositions her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that they can make a a, a baby because uh, they, there aren't many of yes. his race. That, uh, yeah, that yeah. do you prefer to be conscious or unconscious? Yep. Yeah. What is your yeah. pleasure threshold? Right. Was, right. Yes. <laughs> I had right. that and in my notes. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, was, that made me laugh out loud, that scene, because... And, and the look on her face was just, just blank. You know, yeah. she was just like, okay, whatever. No, I'm not going to, no. <laughs> so I found it very weird, but also very funny. Yeah, one of the things I liked, and I'd love to you guys thought about it. I loved that the captain had um, a girlfriend, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, Carolyn Sykes. It looks like she's an independent you know, um, almost an independent captain, a freighter, you know, almost, you know, doing trade. Um, I really like the idea that, you know, we we had the adult themes of, you know, they're together and then you later see them. They're both kind of getting out of bed and he's undressed. He's putting on a robe. And um, I just liked their relationship. I, I liked that he had a love interest that wasn't on the station um that you know him and his lieutenant um you know they are truly just uh you know f- they are c- they are working together uh Lieutenant commander T- kamasha kamishia i think you know laurel right um that actress later was in the good doctor and i really mm-hmm. liked her in that series mm. um so i really liked her no nonsense kind of second in command um so i was glad to see that it appeared there was no we we get a lot of now that when if there's a male lead and a female lead there's immediately a will she or won't will they or won't they and this was very clear he has a relationship this is not anything to do that um any thoughts on laurel uh carolyn anything else on the about kind of relationships on the station well the one thing i want to say is uh going off what karen said here is Oh my gosh, she was straight out of the 80s hairdo. I mean, mm. definitely even more. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. that, it looked like she came right out of an 80s music video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I guess I agree with you because I mean, it's this has always been like to see. Uh, let's throw it back to Moonlighting. You knew they would get together. I mean, there was that chemistry the whole time. Uh, it is. It's most shows. Yeah, you get a couple leads and you know sometime throughout the show. I mean, look at Friends. I think they all hooked up. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's something that happens with developing characters. And it was kind of nice that this was not somebody that was stationed on the ship, uh, that, uh, you know, she's just coming in, you know, uh, I almost think about it like, uh, uh, like a, a a navy uh, personnel, you know, they have like a different girl at every port. I mean, mm-hmm. does she have a different guy at every port? I don't know. Yeah. I, I would that see, way to be. Uh, yeah, I wanted to see a demonstration of those slidey sheets that you the had. Frictionless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. I hear they're frictionless. Yeah. Would like, that just be silk? I don't know. Yeah, silk? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know if anybody else picked up on it, but I thought there was something going on between the lieutenant and the doctor. I don't know if it was kind of bordering on between a father and daughter or a mm-hmm. romantic yeah. kind of vibe going on there. So that, that was uh, kind of weird, but, um, yeah, I, 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 th- I think in general, uh, I'm, I'm, st- I'm be interested to see how the women are portrayed in the show, but um, yeah. considering the time period that it was produced, because it's kind of like you guys said, there's a little bit of uh, old, old um, code of conduct stuff just going on. Yeah. Straight just out bit, yeah, just yeah, a little so bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Anything uh, you disliked that you went, I'm going to have to kind of fight through this. Luke. um 
Well, the dialogue was uh, very wild. Um, at times it was pretty good, but at other times, like you mentioned, it was pretty stilted. Um, yeah. You know, especially when they're explaining functions of the ships and, and whatnot, that, that, uh, the zoo area, yeah. those, those masks, there happens to be two masks in that cabinet. Okay, like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, like just two. two. Yes. Yeah. What if there's three people in your room? <laughs> yes. 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 And exactly. also, so, I mean, this is the future. Why are they so bulky? right yeah that's ridiculous well everything was like that though the crt monitors and all that i mean star trek was around then and they had like ipads and stuff yeah yeah well when there was a newspaper in one scene in the the, Uh, universe today (laughs) yeah (laughs) i was like really okay well (laughs) yeah right (laughs) you know uh they did uh, um right It, it it was kind of interesting that uh you know because i don't think Right. I guess you could have thought that, you know, like no one gets a newspaper now and this is not anywhere close to that. You know, it's all right. on your yeah. digital. Yeah. Career. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, the paper would be expensive in the future, I would think. Yes. Right. I don't know. But uh, um, there was a couple of things like I never really got where exactly the space station was located. Like there's this planet in the background, but I have no idea what that planet is. Um, okay. And the other thing that was weird. um was the the jump gates like are they not controlled by anybody like that um vorlon warship pops in like if i'm on the space station i would be controlling who can come through that jump gate Mm -hmm. so i didn't really understand that mechanic Uh, um hopefully that's going to be explained better in future episodes um is that just a public thing that anybody can use and there's no way you can stop it um but it would just seems like a very major weakness to be positioned so close to a jump gate that you could leave yourself open to attack like that so i I don't know that was that was kind of uh, weird as well i thought of them as interstates like yeah like you pay a toll yeah or something at one end and you get to go through where's the toll taker on the other end right (laughs) who's letting this who's letting this ship come through like uh you know how about you karen anything as a newbie you weren't sure that you know you may have to fight through okay Sinclair. Yeah. Let me let me talk about him for just a second. Please. Could he be any more smart, snarky, smarmy? I mean, he's like, oh. like the whole episode. He that's what he talks like. He's got, oh, like what how far did they go on their first date? You yeah. Know? And I'm like, really? How professional of you? Yeah. Um so again that with the misogyny sort of thing sure. and he he was a little condescending as well so i'm yeah. hoping that gets better the guy is not a bad actor i've seen him you know act other in other he, things i felt he felt a little stilted you mm-hmm. know a little wooden in this uh yeah. you know and and so that was surprising to me and I that is that. the weirdest combination is snarky and stilted yes <laughs> um so yeah there was that the acting a little over the top yeah it didn't matter who it was a little over the it's like they got yeah. their their orders and they were like okay i'm gonna play this to the max right um and like i said the tech is just bad yeah it's bad the monitors everything's like pixelated doors. on the mon- <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah the doors <laughs> i did not appreciate the zoo thing mm-hmm. Yes. And why did they have to walk through the zoo to get to her quarters? It's a shortcut. I yeah, I, I guess see. so. The yes. DFW $2 toll. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> um, and, and earlier I said, you know, the wardrobe and stuff, it's very 80s. The hair yeah. is very 80s. And that bugged me because it's not the 80s. This did right. not come out it, in it the was, 80s. It came, yeah, it came in the 90s. It was in the 90s, mm-hmm. which... Early 90s. Yeah. Still, <laughs> yeah. early '90s is a little. It's almost 20 years old. Yeah. Yeah. This is... So there right. was that, and yeah. and I think his his acting is going to be one of the things that I okay. really, and I know he's not in the full series. I mean, we get Bruce Boxleitner later, which <gasps> I am. You knew that? <gasps> oh. I am a huge Bruce Boxleitner yeah. fan, so yes. Um, Scarecrow and Mrs. King, he was like my first major crush. Yes. Um, on something. And and so I I don't know why I never watched this show. I honestly yeah. don't, because when Bruce Boxleitner was on anything, yeah. I watched wasn't he on Fall Guy too, if I remember right? 
Fall Guy? Maybe. Maybe not. Bit. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Um, but I watched Cuffs, which is the, just the worst movie. Um, and I mean, anything he was in, I watched mm. except for this, apparently, which I guess is good because that means like, now we get to enjoy yeah. your time. Yeah. Right. How about you, Jason? Anything on the rewatch you go, oh, this was I'd forgotten this or not, you know, issues you had a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about the music. I completely forgotten about yeah. the music. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to say the lighting is very weird. I mean, like disco. Did you see when they got on the lifts, how it's just strobes? How can you get on something and just have strobing lights? Up yeah. and down? Uh, that That is just crazy. And uh, you were talking about some stiff acting. I thought outside of Garibaldi, Jakar and Londo, everybody was stiff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't think anybody was just I mean, those three. Uh, Garibaldi, the least of it, because, uh, you know, the other two are very animated. And I guess uh, a- animated characters grab your eye, grab your attention, where the other right. ones, when they're stiffer like that, they kind of get lost in the background. And I know that's not the way the entire series goes, because everybody develops, everybody, you know, gets the limelight and they they come to their own. But in this episode, it just seemed really, I don't know, just really stiff and really uh, almost like. I don't really want to be here doing a science fiction space show, <laughs> but I have to pay the mortgage. I mean, yeah. that's what I kind of thought yeah. some of it was. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, I do have to say that uh, we were talking about how smarmy uh, Sinclair was. How, uh, how, oh boy. It's just like, just hit us in the face with this. But when, uh, what was his name? Uh, Del Barber. <laughs> when mm-hmm. he comes on the uh, station, it's like, Oh my God, everybody has to know this guy's up to no good. Look at him. I mean, no, yeah, he does duh. look like that, doesn't he? Yes. The yeah, just, yes, it was just insane. And mm-hmm. then uh, I had forgotten exactly how, what was going on with uh, the mystery and uh, the cloaking device. I didn't even remember the cloaking device. I'm trying to remember, okay, how are they shape shifting? What's going I knew something like that was yeah. going on, but I couldn't remember how they were doing it. And then, of course, it's just a piece of tech that was smuggled on by Dell. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have to say, oh, uh, oh, that's gonna be spoily. I can't say that. Never mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But I, I <laughs> strike that, reverse it. Yep. Yes. Now I do want to get one of uh, Delenn's gravity rings because I think that would be awesome. Hello. <laughs> yes. I mean, you wouldn't need mace for the ladies. You wouldn't need mace. You just like you know, yeah. just choke them from the inside out. Except for you know what? I'd be using that all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot I'd of be... other rings there too. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now. Some... Yeah, just, uh, you know, looking back at it, I mean, those were the main things. Oh, uh, I do want to ask, who here is a gamer? Anybody play any games? Yep. Okay, so we talked about the CGI in here, the uh, computer animation. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Yeah, uh, even a little bit, anybody play the Wing Commander series with Mark Hamill? Those those CGI sets that they interacted with remind me so much of the ships. Mm -hmm. Um, So it almost seems like because that was around the same time, too. Maybe they got the same people that did that game to do this. Who knows? Yeah, I just think Um, it was the look of CGI at the time. Yeah. 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 Now, that that is a thing right now. They could re-release this because all that CGI, they could go back in and bring it up to 2022. Oh, I don't want that to happen, though. but no, I, but if the CGI now listen to me, if the CGI kind of takes you out of the story, you don't want the story to be hampered in any way. Yeah. If, if they can make the CGI to where it's just more of a set piece and not prominent, but it actually kind of took me out of it because a it is bit. so hmm. much. So may, maybe but not bring it up to 2022. How about 2000? Just yeah. take, it, take it up a decade or something like that. But, yeah. I could see like the communication devices, the little terminals, those would be good updated. I I don't mind the ships, to be honest. Okay. I like the solar sail thing on that one ship. Um, oh. I thought it was pretty decent. I thought the space station looked pretty good. Um, I don't think it's necessary to update everything. I wouldn't mind them updating the personal tech at all. <laughs> and I do agree. Oh, I, I, I mean, did like the guns though. Oh, yeah. the guns are cool too. The and they, one of the oh, things he gosh. wanted is he did not want like this laser or, you know, a mm-hmm. phaser that was unlimited. He wanted mm-hmm. a gun that you had a limited amount of, you know, charges or bullets. Yeah. Right. yeah. I like the sound I, of me. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I do think 
uh, the appearance of them in this pilot episode was a little funny. Uh, they do get better as it goes on, of course. But I, that was one of the things right away when they pulled out those big uh, PPGs. I'm like, oh, my goodness, that's just crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. So I did want to um, I don't know if you guys, but there is um, on the Internet Luker, L- Lurker's Guide to Babylon 5. Mm. And when I was watching this, this was my um, go to place because it had a lot of different things and and it was non spoilery. So if you only mm. went to the first that link, it will talk about and it will have questions like, you know, unanswered questions why was babylon 5 really built and rebuilt and rebuilt mm-hmm. thin care story about human stubbornness doesn't hold water you know um then who sabotaged b1 and b3 and why mm-hmm. who vanished b4 and why you know uh so there's a lot of different i i, I use that every time i watch the episode i'd go there and it was one of the things i loved is it was non-spoilery mm-hmm. and so uh you a lot give of us that link yeah it, it yes i will send that to you yes well, do, do you want us to go there though yeah no 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 because it, it is no it, there is no spoilery to it so okay. you can yeah. if you just if you don't go ahead it will uh, it will not let you, uh, you know, it will just give you things to think about. I deliberately stayed away from, yeah. you know, looking mm-hmm. at it, like searching online. Yeah, exactly. Because even searching for it in Google, you might get stuff. Exactly. You can. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I tried not to do that. I did look on IMDb. Yes. To see what the people had been in otherwise. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the thing I didn't like, I did not like... Um, I thought the lens seemed wooden mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, watching this again, uh, I, I did, I really liked uh, the Lieutenant. Um, and then as someone who's seen the whole thing, um, seeing the way that Jakar and Londo were played brought me pleasure mm-hmm. to, without spoilers. So that was really good. Cool. Um any final thoughts before we get to our ratings? Well, can I talk about a couple? You know how Absolutely. I am with like character actors and what they've yes, been on? Yes, please, please. So I want to make a couple notes here. Um, Tamlin Tamita, who played uh, Takashima, she's in Cobra Kai now. So oh, if, okay. I need to check that out. If you want to know where you've <laughs> seen her from and The Good Doctor. Um, yes. Mira Fullen, of course, who played mm-hmm. Dylan, was Rousseau on Lost. Yes. And we just lost her, I think, last year. Yes. So, oh, we did. Like yeah. half the cast is dead now, which is so strange. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, Especially when you get to there, th- like most pilots, they recast things. Oh, so yeah. when you go to the first episode, you know, Lou, Karen, you'll go, oh, okay. Some of these people are gone. Some people are back. But mm-hmm. yes, if you look at the main cast, um, too many people are lost yeah exactly mm. yeah um uh del varner who played you know he played del varner the, yeah. the dude that came on the space he was actually in chuck versus the helicopter mm. he played the doctor <laughs> in that episode the like mm. the main guy who who was the what do you call it he wasn't the antagonist but he okay. was the main guy and of course peter jurassic who played londo was cron and Crom and Tron and and a million other things. Um, Andreas Katsoulas, who played Jakar, he played Tomalak in STTNG, which if you've watched TNG, he, that's yeah. a pretty big. Is he the one armed man in the Harrison Ford Fugitive movie? Mm, like he might have been. He might be. Yeah. He he was in a lot of genre yes. stuff. Um, Let's see what else. And the, the last one I had, and this might be interesting to you, Jesse, uh, Patricia Tallman, who played Lita, the telepath. She played Vivian Marchand on Castle He's Dead, She Said. He yes, did, and she also is um, was a stunt double for a lot of things. Mm-hmm, I read her mm-hmm. book, and it was a very interesting book. Yeah, I was uh, like, oh, yes, that's where I know her from. Yes. Um, and Greg... Aronovitz was in this and Haley McLean. Haley McLean is the voice of the ship, the computer. Um, she's a script supervisor for a lot of genre shows. 
gotcha. um, The Walking Dead and things like that. So she's very well versed, which I found interesting. And uh, Greg hmm. Aronovitz. I don't know was, that one. Sorry. <laughs> Stop, um, Alexa. I said my wake word. Um, yeah. So uh, he played the assassin and he's a prop master. Oh, yeah, so, very nice. Um, there was a lot of cool stuff in this. Yeah, uh, it was. You know, I love looking to see where did I know that person from. Yeah. Um, so as we go on in the podcast, I'll be doing that. Like Absolutely. Sure. All right. Um, any final thoughts? And then any predictions from our rookies? Okay. Um, I, I do want to mention. Uh, I did like the look of the Vorlon. Uh, yes. that's correct right i thought like, mm -hmm. yeah very jim henson-esque yes henson -esque, uh, very much it, i agree but, uh, uh i thought there was a big mo missed opportunity there with um or it was just the way how it was worked into the episode is uh, when uh, the lieutenant asked the doctor what he saw and the, you know his you know like he's he he's trying to make this profound moving statement but it just really came off kind of um light uh, and it was in the yeah. wrong part of the episode it should have been mm -hmm. maybe the last scene between those two characters yeah. or something like it but because he, he just like i saw the face of god and oh yeah uh what's for breakfast it was kind yeah. of, like, kind right. of like that it just really fell flat which is too sure. bad because i thought that would have been a great moment um uh thoughts for the series i'm still not sure what the parameters of what the show is trying to do is i mean there's a couple okay. of plot points you know with the captain's memory loss and jakar is it jakar i think the, the ferengi yeah. guy that's plotting so I, I think those will be two driving things going forward okay um the psychor thing i'm a little leery of it like you guys mentioned and let's say there's some sort of like benny jesseret order and they have to have very strict rules about how they use their powers and whatnot um okay. and uh i guess overall i'm a little i'm, I'm getting the vibe that this first season is going to be a bit of a slog uh, I have a feeling it's going to be kind of like Farscape and Fringe, mm -hmm. um, in that it's just it's Star of, Trek, and <laughs> it's just fleshing yeah. out the universe. Yes, and yes. you gotta get used to everything before the story kicks in, and which is what I'm really looking forward to because this is a five season long story that mm -hmm. um, a lot of yeah. series. You know, I'm a serialized guy. I like serialized yeah. television versus standalone episodes. So well, I, I will tell you, Star Trek, oddly yeah. enough. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. See, so, you know, uh, I will tell you, and I'd love to, Jason to feel i i enjoyed the individual episodes there's a couple that if we weren't doing a podcast i would probably skip you know if a rewatch <laughs> but um but overall i i do think it it as it goes it gains gears mm -hmm. uh but you know and as in many first seasons of any show not just science fiction but you know are you know they're figuring mm -hmm. out the rules they're figuring out what characters interact well they're getting yeah. their sea legs you know on that um but overall i i i know a lot of people talk bad about the first season but i there are some really great episodes and sure. um similar to the marvel universe um i i have a good friend junior who always talks about like I'm, I'm putting my fingers together like you can't skip a marvel universe movie because mm -hmm. it, it all connects and right. this does set up a thought um jason any thoughts on my thought your statements oh. there uh exactly i mean i haven't actually gone to verify this information um but i did hear that jms actually wrote the first and last episodes uh, and then filled everything in to make those connect mm. yes. uh, so unlike a lot of them like well, like Lost, you mentioned Lost, Karen, where you can tell they made it up as they went oh, yeah. along. Yeah. They had a, a clear premise for season one because I believe it was originally picked up for a 13 episode miniseries, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then when the ratings went great, then oh, yeah. they're scrambling to make a whole story where and he he had this all planned out. And uh, and just what Jesse had said earlier, another thing I'd heard about that is JMS uh, wrote every single episode except for five. That was the number Ooh. I heard. Only five episodes were not penned by him. So that that shows you the depth he was into it and how he wanted to make everything just be so cohesive. So sorry, Karen, go ahead. No, that's OK. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. I love his stuff. He is yeah. an amazing author. Um, it, he came up with a lot of storylines for um, comic books. 
Yeah. A really great Wonder Woman run. A, yeah. I mean, prolific in Spider-Man. Yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to his writing in this show, definitely. Yeah, and, and Jason is correct. Um, he, he wrote a synopsis of the whole five um, seasons and then had trap doors built in that if mm. they lost the character how he would adjust the storyline so and he did lose a couple of major characters uh, along the way and he had to adjust but overall mm. he has said that he got in almost everything he wanted and so there is a purpose and he um he tells the story that when he was right in college or right out of college he spent some time like in a commune um, and they people were um, they had glass um, different stained glasses and they were putting them together and they had big pieces and his was small mosaics intricately built together because that's how his mind thinks and mm. so this was his he wanted he he said that in British TV there was always this serialized you know, like mm -hmm. Blake Seven right. and, and The Prisoner. Yeah. And he wanted, he, he believed American TV could do it. Um, you know, Karen and I used to talk a lot about this as you did, Lou, but especially when we did Storm in the Castle about, um, you know, the um, Ponderosa, you know, with the Bonanza, little Joe falls in love, gets married, she dies in the next episode. No one's even talking about that. Yep. There's, no, you know, everything resets. Uh, One thing about Babylon 5 is nothing <clears throat> resets. There is that continuation, partly because he, you know, he got gray hair. He was, he aged considerably. <laughs> but you think about writing five seasons of TV. And yeah, That's I believe, brutal. I know I Neil know Gaiman wrote an episode, Paul, uh, Peter David wrote a couple. Um, there's very few episodes that he didn't uh, mm. write. Um, that's that's an sure amazing had, feat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he had a hand in those too. Whether yeah, he yes, wrote he them. Did. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, and again, Peter David, I, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. He's Neil Gaiman. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Neil Gaiman Fontana? Yeah. DC Fontana. Yeah, yeah. So, Ooh. yeah, some really good uh, writers. And Harlan Ellison was wow. uh, involved with almost everything. Um, mm. He was, uh, Harlan was kind of had a over, he never specifically wrote a script, but he was, JMS went to him all the time about things. And so he was very much kind of the godfather of the series to help them. So mm. pretty strong legacies. Can, right. I, can um, I bring up something I forgot yes, real please. quick? Yeah. One of the scenes I really enjoyed was the one with the sand garden. Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought yeah, that, that was, was cool. that was a really nice, um, calm part yes. of the show and, and a way to do an allegory for her relationship with him and, yeah. and how she's kind of a philosopher. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I like that scene too. And I, I meant to bring it up earlier. I'm sorry. No, I think that's good. And I also think one of the things that I love about this series is they are not afraid to take those beats that there are small moments in mm -hmm. episodes where you're, it's just a character moment. It is right. just that, so it's very great. And there was actually like a plot point written into that where she gives him information. Yes. But there's also that kind of, here's what my character's about and I'm gonna be calm and talk to you about the sand garden and you tell me, you know, the history behind yeah. them. Good. So I liked it. All right, Karen, what's your, what's your rating? It's not great. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> because again, it's a setup. Um, yeah. I give it six Spoo, which I guess we're going to go with yes. Spoo. Yes. Okay. You will find out about Spoo. Yes. I'm getting hungry now. Yeah. Uh, Lou? <laughs> I'm getting nervous. Um, <laughs> spoo does not have No, I, I know what the Spoo is. <laughs> yeah. I know what it is. So. I don't. Um, I'm going to be a little more lenient. Uh, I'm going to give it a seven. Spoon, okay. I think. Um, okay. There, there's enough to intrigue me. I, I, the setup is good. The execution is okay. a little clunky, but that's part of the okay. time and the technology. So I'm being a little lenient on that. And don't forget, this is Karen's thing. You can pick your own item if you want. Oh. So you don't have to go spoo. So okay, going then forward. I'm going to go seven Three Stooges haircut. There nice. you go. <laughs> Jason, how about you? Um. Okay, so 
I know where this all goes. So yes. of course I'm a little tainted there, but I think I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go eight. I think I'm going to go eight Bervari okay. um, because that's probably my limit. And then I'd have to stop anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, revisit the entire series now that I've started. Go oh, good. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. I, same thing. Um, you know, I'm going to go eight out of 10. Um, illegal coffee beans uh, which i thought was a really nice point to show how things are like is that real coffee and you know and she's like yeah. you know i snuggled in enough um so yeah i i i i'm excited about re-watching this this gives me it is as i said it's one of my favorite series and being able to share with you know such wonderful friends and the idea to revisit uh we are going to be doing this every other week uh so that way there's not a strain on uh, us so be looking for it on the jkl uh media which is jesse karen lou <laughs> in case you haven't figured it out uh and so we'll be doing that um Karen, if someone wants to reach you, how can they? I am pretty much Alivaria everywhere, A L E V E R I A. Yes. Um, the mostly on Twitter because I love the Twitter machine. Okay. So you can find me there. Um, and again, my blog is alliesstuff.com. Okay. So you can find my links there. Okay. And uh, Lou? Yeah, same here. Primarily Twitter. Um, even though it's become uh, more of a, a voice box for yeah. opinion rather than uh, just the fun stuff that I originally used it for. Yeah. Uh, uh, at uh, Lou, L-O-U-W Sitzma, or at the Stephen King podcast. Okay. Jason? Uh, probably the easiest way is just go to our main website, digitalsuitproductions.com. And uh, on there, we have all of our shows along with, uh, you know, uh, different icons to click on to go to our discord twitter facebook etc so that's okay. that's the easiest way to find us all right and i uh you can reach the show at jklb 5 podcast at gmail.com i'm on twitter at jesse jackson dfw you can hear me talking doctor who on next stop everywhere general pop uh, culture topics on how many podcasts and uh the podcast that takes most of my time set less than bruce where I talk to Bruce Springsteen fans from around the world. I just recently crossed 800 episodes. See what you wow. created, yeah. Lou and Karen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a monster. And so, and if you're not a fan of Bruce Springsteen, reach out to me anyway, because uh, <laughs> I love having people uh, discuss their favorite musicians. In fact, I just interviewed a lady who had written a book on David Cassidy, and that Ooh. episode's going to be coming up. So really good. Yeah, you had me on to talk about uh, nerd, nerd yes. rock. Yes, we did a million years ago. Yeah, um, and it had nothing to do really with Bruce Springsteen. Not so, at all. Yeah, yeah. He his show Set Lusting Bruce is very interesting. I highly recommend it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So Jason, you have to reach out to me and let's let's talk music. All right. All right. So Lou, Karen, Jason, thank you guys so much, listeners. Thank you. Uh, please tell us what you think. Uh, enjoy the ride along with us. I'm going to end this the same way I do set listing Bruce. Go get vaccinated. Go get uh -huh. your booster. Let's all be safe and careful and be good to each other because that's the only way we're going to do this. For now, we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Cannot say. Saying I would know. Do not know. So cannot say. What a wonderful idea. You do not understand. But you will. The future is all around us, waiting in moments of transition to be born in moments of revelation. No one knows the shape of that future or where it will take us. We know only that it is always born in pain.